Good morning, everyone. Um, I am Jenny Pulsifer, and I'm a, a friend of Kate. I still consider myself Kate's friend. Um, I first got to know her about 17 years ago when she moved to Salt Lake City. And about 10 years ago, Kate and two other friends and I became members of the same writing group. Um, so we met every month. After COVID, we met every month by Zoom <laughs> um, and, and shared our writing, got feedback from each other. And I really came to know Kate's voice. Um, her ideas, uh, the way that she would express them, and that was a great privilege. This is a beautiful book, and it, it encapsulates um, a lot of Kate's best thinking and her voice, and um, it's also a beautiful book just physically. I love the, the art that the Maxwell Institute put on, on the cover of this book and this sense um, of opposites, kind of dark and light, that was part of the theme of this book, that both things are true. Um, one of the quotes that appears in the introduction um, is from Joseph Smith, who said that by proving contraries, truth is made manifest. And that's what she does in each of the essays of this book. She takes two ideas that may seem to be contrary to each other, and then explores how wrestling with them brings you to a higher truth. And um, this book is really the product of Kate's thought and speaking and service, because many of these essays arose from invitations to speak at Stanford, to speak at um, an event for the Maxwell Institute, to speak for various other events. Um, in the writing group, I got the chance to see all of these essays in various stages over a series of years, and I got to help her process feedback that she got from people who commented on them. This book, as, as a result of that work, is, is the product of women working together, kind of a collaborative female effort. Um, now, of course, Kate is the main author of this, but let me explain how collaboration fits into this. In the last year of Kate's life, she was working on these essays. Um, she was sending them to Jana Reese, a friend and a, a, an editor, to give her feedback so that she could put them together into this book, which she had agreed to do for the Maxwell Institute for a long time. But as the year went on, her cancer accelerated and it became very difficult for her to work on this. Um, she kept trying, she kept showing up to that work every day. Um, but in the last summer, uh, kind of a beautiful thing happened. Rosalind Welch, who's sitting here on the front row, um, felt a prompting to reach out to Sam and and to Kate and offer to help in whatever way she could, whether it was uh, you know, compiling notes or um, collecting various drafts or just bookkeeping or whatever that she could do to help make sure that these words came to fruition, that this book got published. And she sent off that email and got an email back. Um, a very gracious acceptance of that offer of help. And so Rosalind plunged in and started helping, you know, reviewing uh, versions that Kate had written and giving her feedback. Sam was keeping a blog through the last few months, um, well, for a long time actually, <laughs> and he mentioned Rosalind's offer and their grateful acceptance. And when I heard that, I thought, I need to be part of this process um, because I had worked with Kate for so many years and I knew her voice and I knew her thought, um, not all of her thought, but enough that I, I felt like I could pull together the versions that I had and, and be able to offer some help. So I texted Sam and said, 
I would like to help too. And he pulled me into that process, which proved to be a great blessing in my life. Um, we kept working on it uh, through the end of the summer and through the beginning of fall. Kate passed away in August. Um, and the idea that the Maxwell Institute and that Sam had was that this book would get finished and would be in its final stage, you know, ready to be read by a year from the time that Kate passed away um, as kind of a, a way of celebrating her life and work on that anniversary. Well, the publication process is slow. And so we were wrestling with that, trying to figure out how can we get this done. We were um, you know, reading as quickly as we can, editing, trying to make the deadlines that the press was telling us that we had to meet. Um, I was working on one of her essays that had gotten less attention in that last year of her life. Um, so it was still kind of in a draft form. And um, I was in my living room, and I'd read through it, and I came across a passage that was, I just didn't know what she meant. I, I couldn't figure it out. And um, I, I knew what her voice was, but I didn't know everything that she was thinking. And that's part of the purpose of a writing group. A writing group is to give a draft, get feedback, figure out what is communicating and what isn't communicating, and then help the person to be able to fix those parts that are still a little uh, fuzzy. <laughs> and so um, I didn't have that benefit. I hadn't seen this last draft. And so I was wrestling to try to figure out what she meant and wrestled that night, went to bed, got up in the morning, wrestled some more. And I also prayed about it, um, prayed that I'd be able to know what her thoughts were and and convey them the way that she wanted. And as I was sitting there, all of a sudden, thoughts came rushing into my mind. And I just felt like Kate was in the room with me and that she was helping me understand what she wanted to say. And that was a beautiful experience for me. Um, it was revelation. and. A good, a fitting pair to the revelation that Rosalind received, I think, in bringing this, this book um, to fruition in Kate's voice and with her thoughts. In this book, one of the chapters is um, on revelation. And it talks about revelation as a gift from God, but also as a process and as a result of hard work. And I felt like this whole experience really encapsulated that. We did have to work hard to, to you know, edit the book and bring it about in that collaborative process that is so key to Kate's experience as a scholar. Um, she loved nurturing young LDS scholars, particularly women in academia. Um, she loved being able to work together with people. and. We were doing that, and we were also praying and seeking revelation in the way that she so often did, because she was such a committed uh, follower of Christ and, and lover of the gospel. In addition to um, Rosalind and Jana Reese, Miranda Lambert, who is the editor of the series that this book appears in, oh, sorry, <laughs> Miranda Wilcox, um, also put in a lot of time gathering things together to make this this work um, just in parting. The final essay in the book is called The Weight of Legacy. Makes a lot of sense um, to have that as the last um, essay. And in the book, she in the essay, she describes an interview, a podcast interview, in which she was asked a question that the interviewer often asked people, which was, what would you like your obituary to say? And it's kind of an uncomfortable question. Um, earlier, Kate's husband, Sam, had been asked to answer that question. Uh, what would you like your obituary to say? And he said, he died defending his family from a grizzly bear attack with his bare hands. <laughs> 
I love that because it kind of parodies the seriousness and the heroic expectations of the question. And Kate also kind of undercut that question. You know, she acknowledged she would love the work she did in gathering Mormon women's voices together to last. She would love that to be a legacy. But that she really thought that a more permanent legacy would be her recipes. Um, many of you know that Kate was a fabulous cook. She loved reading recipes. Um, she loved cooking recipes. Um, her Away Cafe that she did with Amelia is, is a wonderful gift that I encourage you to look at. I, that celery salad, one of my favorites. <laughs> um, she wanted, she said that, that recipes should be an important part of her legacy as a way of pointing out kind of the, the dailiness of women's work, the service that women do through cooking, uh, the way that it connects people and creates relationships through, through giving food, um, through sharing food. It also encapsulates the pleasure that she firmly believed in. I remember her sharing a quote in, um, in a writing group where she's uh, quoted from a book called um, Orwell's Roses that said that um, delight and pleasure are radical acts. And radical acts that I want to do more. <laughs> um, that's what food meant to her. And, um, and she, I love the, the thought that these, these recipes will live on in her children, in her grandchildren, in the people who loved her, including me. Um, the book, in fact, ends with a recipe for a really delicious chocolate cake that she loved. So as you look through this book, and I encourage all of you to read it, you'll get the privilege of hearing Kate hearing what was important to her, seeing, maybe even cooking, <laughs> what was important to her. It was a blessing to me to work on this book, and it's still a blessing to me every day to have been and to continue to be Kate's friend.